How do we know this stuff is true? This is the Bible. I, I don't know if this stuff is true, right? Can we depend on it or not? But listen, I got a little story. Years ago, my mom got a phone call and the phone call said, hey, your grandson, Jeremy's in trouble. He's in jail and we need some money to get him out and he needs it now. But you can't tell anybody about this. It's super secret. She didn't know. Is this true? Wow, she was in a mess. I happened to call her shortly after that for another reason. And when I did, um, I found out and I said, Mom, don't do it. It's a scam. And we did our, our due diligence, called Jeremy, proved that he was fine and cleared up. Folks, the same thing is with scripture. Is it true? Is it a scam? Huh, our readings today address that. If we do our due diligence and we look at what's really there, the second reading from 2 Peter, Peter says, for we did not follow cleverly devised stories. We didn't follow these, these scams or these other stories. And he's referring to what's in the Matthew reading, the transfiguration event, where Peter, James, and John went up on the mountain and Jesus was transfigured, his appearance changed, and they heard the voice of God. And in that second reading in, in Peter, he even says, we ourselves heard this voice that came from heaven when we were with him. He proves we are eyewitnesses. We heard, we saw what happened. That's how we know it's true. And also in our first reading, there's another story there, the story of Moses going up on the mountain with 70 elders, uh, seeing God, talking to God, and having God tell him to come up even further and receive the Ten Commandments. These are not made up stories. The Bible is not made up stories. It's not cleverly designed stories. This is true. We can base our faith on scripture and on what comes from scripture that Jesus Christ is our Lord. He did die for us and he did pay for our sin.